we now have Liu Kang Lee from the Ministry of Education in Singapore speaking to us about physics educators as designers of simulations using easy Java simulation. Hi, I'm Andrew Khan. I'm from Singapore. I'm very happy to be here to talk to, talk to you about physics educators, teachers, and faculty members as designers of simulation using this tool called Easy Java Simulation. And this is just a screenshot of uh, some of the things that I have done with the schools. So you can see a teacher and then the students later on break up and then uh, talk about do inquiry learning using the, the scenes that we have designed. So what is EJS? I hope you all have attended Wolfgang's uh, workshop, this W20. So basically EJS is a software code generator that is designed for the creation of uh, simulations. Without the need for very complex Java knowledge, you could actually, mortals like us, could make the simulations you know, without a, a massive team or a vendor to, to make something like that for you. How can you use EJS? Basically, in this context of this 10 minutes, I would like to bring up forth this idea that uh, I have benefited. I'm the teacher here. Teachers can create uh, virtual lab simulations, can deepen their professional practice. And uh, because of people like Fu Kuang and, and Wolfgang, uh, the open source uh, physics guys, and you can actually join this global community of uh, learning uh, circles. So you, from there, you can actually learn from one another. 365 days. So why did I do this? Is because uh, I hope to be able to use those efforts that I made and allow the students to learn uh, science as an inquiry. I'm not going to skip all this, but basically, if, if at a higher level of pedagogy, you might even want to explore allowing your students to create uh, by making, we learn a lot, so uh, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, this is a model which was available from Paco's library. It originally looked like this. It's a very simple model, and I was fortunate enough to, to, con to have conversations through emails and uh, through forums with Paco and, uh, and Fukun. And then I managed to make this little simulation. I'm, I'm just going to play it and let you take a look. So basically, I, I designed the, the interface. So I, I added systems, flaws to allow for conceptual understanding of the context of the learning environment. And I made visualizations possible through little check boxes. These are your usual physics quantity, which I do not need to explain. And you can see that this simulation allows the student to visualize simple harmonic motion through a spring system. So what I did was I, I made it such that there are actually opportunities for students to vary the equilibrium position and blah 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 and spring constant and, and friction. Uh, but basically I just want to allow the simulation to run with a little bit of a damping. And again, the whole idea here is not to tell the student the physics, but to allow them to make sense of it. So I thought that uh, this simulation was pretty cool and yeah, I just like to share with you guys. Okay, now down here, because in, in the context of my country and the syllabus that I teach, I need to allow the student to understand the concept of a driving force. So down here, I just arbitrarily choose a driving uh, amplitude and a certain frequency. And then you can see that the, the simulations run according to the variables assigned. Uh, let, me, let me do without the damping, maybe that's a bit nicer. Oops. And because you could design pedagogical elements inside if you want, because EJS is open source, so you could now look at the various graphs, you could, you could think of infinite possibilities for, for your own students' learning uh, needs. And I'm just going to show uh, just a couple of them, and then I, because of the constraint of time, I just like to toggle the, the other one. So this is, these are some of the common uh, variables that uh, my students need to, need to learn. So I'm just going to move on. Uh, this is another one which I took from Paco's example. It was a simple uh, two-body collision of two sphere, which I took a lot of, of, of my own time. Uh, basically, this. These are all done uh, based on passion. So I did, I did something. I learned a lot uh, from making the simulation. So this particular simulation, if I may just vary the velocities of the two particles and just collide them under the perfectly inelastic collision. So you can see it pretty much obeys the physics laws that was embedded in the modeling. 
Uh, but what I did was, as a teacher, I couldn't help but put in uh, elements of what we call symbolic representations of the physics phenomena because we would like our own students to be able to describe the physics through symbols as well. So uh, this is my attempt at allowing the students to make sense of this thing called the conservation of momentum and, uh, and the energy equation if it is conserved at all. Uh, kinetic energy, I mean. And in addition, EJS is quite a cool software which I hope at the end of the talk you will be convinced that it is cool <laughs> and you take the time to, to learn it uh, because there is a lot to be learned and, but I think it is worth it once you see that your, the faces on your students Okay, so this is an example of the, the, the real world this is the symbolic representation and you could have also let me see where is it now okay. You could also put in the scientific representation, which is the graphs. Uh, but because of, again, uh, lack of time, I just uh, move on. Uh, this is pretty cool. This just came out recently because Paco released uh, EJS with the 3D uh, Java module. So this is a, a simulation which I adapted from Paco's uh, sim. So basically, this is an example of a 3D Java rendered simulation made two minutes ago. So this is Singapore, uh, in case you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is to demonstrate the, the, the concept of uh, geostationary orbits. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this is another applet which I took from uh, Fukun. Let's see. Okay, this is the, the 3D view. This is one of the these are some of the ones that I thought worth sharing. So what happening is that there's a, a two ball system attached to a string, and then the student can actually. Of course, I have. You have to allow the inquiry uh, learning to occur through activities. The active learning can be implanted through worksheets and all that. Uh, the suggestion is we, we like to do it through practicals rather than using it as a demo. So down here, the student can look, understand circular motion. And from the 3D view, they can see how uh, circular motion occurs here. If I could just toggle this, and I hope it works, this is the, the new 3D Java look, uh, which will hang at it. Uh, this, this is, probably I don't have much time left, so uh, I'm just going to show you this. Uh, I don't know what to say, but it, is, it looks real fantastic. <laughs> You can actually uncheck the, the visualization and then allow the students to, to explore. This is an AC generator. Uh, these are the ones that I could, I could just give. And a big thank you to my open source physics friends. I think I saw Doug uh, sitting right here. And, and a couple of others uh, that are here. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to learn. Uh, I just like to mention uh, Doug, which is here. Uh, Paco, this, this fellow over here, Fukun and, and Christian. This, through these people, I have actually learned a lot. And if you are interested to find out more, you can actually go and find these various websites, OSP and the NTNU Java uh, Virtual Lab. So, I hope I have convinced you to join the community and contribute more and be a citizen of the world. Okay, let's thank you. Thanks. Thank you for coming to session FI.